All right, we are live. Hello, and let's we'll give everybody a chance to come on. And I hope that everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful evening. Um, I, if you are not aware, I am Lynn. My YouTube channel is Midlife Carnivore, and I have a very special guest here tonight. And I am excited because this is a fellow Washingtonian carnivore. Woohoo! Yes. She actually found me first and I reached out and I just, I saw the interview that we posted on, you posted on your channel with me. And, um, you know, during that interview and getting to kind of get a feel for you, I was just like, I felt like, oh my gosh, I love this person. <laughs> you know, you're just yeah. such an amazing spirit and such a joy and such a bright light. And I'm uh, so looking forward to meeting you in person, face to face. Yeah. Now, I happen to know that you are six mm -hmm. feet tall. Yes. So I'm always the tall one in the crowd because I'm five okay. eight. So okay. I will be happy to have my tall friend meet you. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, anyways, I have been kind of getting to know your story a little bit as I've been mm -hmm. watching your channel. I want to kind of start off a little bit just by showing your channel. And before we get started, yeah, let me go make sure I got it here. There we go. Okay. So this is, so Coach Rose AJ, Carnivore Girl for Life is Rose's channel. And look at that amazing smile. You've got interviews on your channel. You've got a lot of shorts. You've got people that you're, you know, there's some of these people I don't know. So I think it's really great. Oh, and there's me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you are very, very involved in fitness. You have encouraging videos to help encourage people to overcome any challenges they have. Your goofball, I can see. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, as we get started, I just wanted to show everybody your channel. So we'll come back. Thank you. And uh, revisit it again. Okay. But um, so Rose, I want to do just kind of give the floor over to you. I wanted to give okay. you an opportunity to maybe just start out sharing your history, okay. the events that happened in your life mm -hmm. and the issues in your diet when you were a child and how that affected your life, your mental health. And what finally led you to becoming a carnivore? Because you <laughs> have been successful with diets in the past. In fact, you were on the Today Show. Yes, twice. Okay. Twice. <laughs> okay. And I do have video to show. And I think I would like to show what the point in the story where we get there. I'd like to show okay. probably the first video for sure. Okay. And show everybody. And so it's like when I was watching the video, I was like, wow, she was so successful before finding the carnivore diet. So mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really helpful for people to hear like, why wasn't that enough? Right. And right. why did you have to take that extra to go and to the carnivore diet. So the right. floor is yours. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Rose AJ, Carnivore Girl for Life. And I want to start this off by saying thank you, Lynn, my Washingtonian sister. I'm so appreciative of you for taking this time. And I'm honored to be here on your platform. Well, thank so, you for coming. I'm from Tacoma, Washington. And um, guys, my story totally sucked from birth forward. Um, I was mentally, physically, sexually, and physically abused from the time that I was about three years old all the way until I was almost 18. And most of the abuse occurred by my natural father, so my biological father. So with that being said, I developed an unhealthy relationship, and I just put quote unquote unhealthy relationship with food from the time that I was three and a half, because those are my earliest memories, Lynn, of yeah. eating petroleum jelly, raw ground beef, dry dog food. And I was also um, abused by cousins and other people that I came into contact with in my younger years. Do you so, know if this is a generational thing in your family? Well, I know my father abused me and um, my cousin, and then there were some older 
people that weren't necessarily family members that I was exposed to that mm -hmm. sexually abused me as well. And I know that my cousin, one of my cousins, her father abused her, but ironically, um, her mother divorced this father, right? And put him in jail as a result of that. But when I shared, when I cried out for help, they didn't believe me. They made excuses because it was their brother. It's just, it's just really, really, uh, I won't even say bizarre. It's just sickening. How yeah. old were you when you, <clears throat> when you tried to seek that help? and set, share your story and they didn't believe you? So I was somewhere around sixth and seventh grade. So I don't know if, well, we're in the same age range. So about the sixth, yeah. seventh grade, we were living in South Carolina in a trailer. And I remember telling the school counselor that things weren't right at home and they made a home visit. I okay. don't know if you remember that social workers actually made okay. home visits back then and they just let it go. They just let it go, drop the ball. And there was probably like four times growing up where I actually went back to California to live because my stepmother and father went overseas to Korea to a place where I couldn't go. Okay. And I tried to tell them there when I was probably like 13, 14. And um, they used to tell me, don't tell your grandmother because it will kill her. And I literally, I believe that literally, right? And this so, was your father's mother that they were referring yes, to? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I never knew my biological mother okay. or her side of the family. So it was just a real ish show, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And so I'm really thankful. I thank God every day that it was actually food that I became addicted to, that I used as a coping mechanism. But there was also so many other addictions that intertwined with that, okay. right? But it was never drugs. And it, I was scared of drugs, to be quite honest. Like, you know, this is your egg, you know, you're frying you put an egg on the sidewalk and in 100 degrees, you don't remember those commercials? I remember that. This, I is, your brain, this is your brain on <laughs> yes. drugs. Yes. That was, I remember those commercials. Yes, I did everything oh. else but the drugs. But actually, food was the drug, right? It is a food drug. Was the drug. Yes. It's the first drug that I chose. It's a very acceptable, socially acceptable mm -hmm. drug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so with all the years growing up and whatnot, I always felt like an outcast, even though I made friends easily. Um, I was never really actually a loner because I, I rallied the troops. Right. But um, at home, I was alone a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And food, food, food. I could eat candy, chips, you know, little Debbie's, whatever I could get my hands on. And, you know, when you have money to put in church, you're supposed to put it in church. I would run away from church and go buy the Jolly Ranchers, the nickel candies, the penny wow. candies and stuff like that. I would steal food in the third grade. I remember there was like peanuts that the school sold, but they never locked the cabinet where they went to stock the peanuts from. Yeah. I would steal from there. I would steal other kids' lunch. It was just crazy, Lynn. So food was my ultimate obsession. And I got through um, uh, through to 18 without any problems. And then I relocated back to Washington because I was looking for a man. I needed a husband to take mm -hmm. care of me. And it was military, right? Military, guaranteed paycheck, guaranteed benefits, the whole nine. So you joined, but, you joined the no, military? No, I moved back to Washington with an old high school friend who was already okay. still living here. She had had a baby. We lived in a studio apartment in downtown Tacoma. I met my husband and we got married three months later. Okay. So you yeah. got married at what age? So I was like 18 and a half. So I had okay, turned 18 very, in September. I got young. married in February. Yeah. 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 So, wow. and then from there, my weight pretty much was like 180, 190. And I never really thought I had a problem, if you know what I'm saying. I never well, thought. For six feet tall, mm -hmm. 180, 190 is a very healthy weight. But Lynn, this is the catch. This is the catch. So at about 12 years old, I started dieting. I started using X-Lax, Dexatrim. Yeah, yeah. I abused laxatives forever and a day, drinking Diet Tab. I would eat crackers and green beans. I would starve, binge, starve. So I've always been a binger, right? From my earliest years, binger. But at 12, me and a couple of cousins thought it would be cool to lose weight. 
Mm. And so that's how my dieting history started. So and, your weight um, was not based on eating healthy. No, no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the first 18 years got married and I had my daughter by the time I was 20. So my weight shot up to 300 and no oh, matter what wow. I try, yeah, no matter what I tried, it just stayed there. That was the new set point for me. And I would say probably six weeks after I gave birth, Lynn, I went back to using laxatives. I went back mm-hmm. to, you know, the binge starve, da, 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 da. Nothing really worked. Nothing yeah. worked. Everything and when that you I did. Binge, was it just binging and yeah. or no purging? No, I was not that brave girl. Or that I would <laughs> <laughs> I tried it though, but it just was not my jam. It yeah. wasn't my jam. Yeah. Yeah. It was just straight binging. But I also discovered exercise at 20 and I started feeling better while I was exercising and a little bit afterwards, but I wasn't connecting the dots. So that became another addiction of mine, right? Along with alcohol for a short amount of time, um, alcohol, that um, hairstyles, like African-American women, we can, we can wear some hair. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So my hairstyle would change every between weaves and braids and stuff like that. So as soon as a four week mark, I would start getting stress, getting anxiety. It's time for me to go get my hair done again when there was nothing wrong with my hair. Okay. So there was other compulsions that were going along with that. So every four weeks you needed a new look. Yes, 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 yes. And shopping, just, just everything under the sun. So I probably had about at least eight things going on at the same time, but food remained constant. Yeah. And, um, Yeah. So somewhere in 2002, so in 1996, (laughs) this is really funny. In 1996, um, I decided to apply to be a corrections officer with King County here in Washington. Mm -hmm. I was 300 pounds and I knew that I had to pass the PT test, you know, where you run a mile and a half, do so many pushups, the physical agility test. Girl, the salary back then was like 19 an hour. I had never made that much money in my life. I was about to do that. That was a decent amount of money back then. Yes. Yes. So I ran, I made it in the cutoff time. I was like, I don't know how I did this, but I did it. And it was by God's grace, got the job and went on. But then that started another addiction running. So did you train train in order to get Pass the exam? Mm-mm. It was just, just my like sheer will and determination. I wanted that life. money. I wanted that money, girl. Yes. Wow. Yes. I, there's no way yeah. at 300 pounds I could <laughs> Any yeah. physical exam. Yeah. So, so that started another addiction with running and okay. um and all that good stuff. So, it, it's just been a whirlwind. Do you have some questions for me or you want me to keep running my mouth, girl? So, oh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm interrupting you with my questions no, for sure. No, and, I want so you to interrupt point, me. You're at 300 pounds. You've passed mm-hmm. the physical exam mm-hmm. to be a corrections officer. So I'm assuming you got the job. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and it sounds like you're going along with all of these coping mechanisms. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, it's interesting because as I'm listening to all these things, mm-hmm. sometimes in and of itself, none of these things, if they're done in a very healthy way, are a problem. You know, people can shop, people can go get their hair done, people can exercise, it's considered healthy, you know, but you were doing it, it sounds like to try to cope with the trauma from your childhood. So I think partially, part not consciously, but partially because of that, but also for weight, weight maintenance, weight loss, Mm -hmm. the whole nine. I just knew that I felt better. Right. And Mm -hmm. so I was never given the opportunity to have counseling or work with a Mm -hmm. therapist. And I believed in the myths that black people do not go to therapists. Black Mm -hmm. people don't go to psychologists. Black people don't, especially women, when I was growing up, that's what I believed when I heard that, yeah. right? So I'm not speaking for everybody of color, but I grew up with that, that it's a well, stigma to have mental health. I grew up with stigma. that same mm-hmm. thought process as well. 
and it wasn't necessarily a racial thing. It was just that if you're strong, if you're like, if you have, and with my growing up, it was, we, I grew up in a Christian home and it was, we went to church. And if you have faith and if you pray, then you don't need to go to psychologists, mm -hmm. you know? So that was, that was the way I grew up too. So I completely understand that, you know, having that family pressure, yeah. you know, that it's a weakness to seek help. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And so when you were 12, I just kind of want to backtrack just a tad. Mm -hmm. What was it just kind of in style that you're, you and your friends decided that you wanted to go on this diet or was it that one of you was overweight or what was the impetus for that? So it was two cousins and I was in California living for almost um, maybe a year. So I was the oldest, there's a middle and then there's a younger one. And then there's a younger, younger one that's six years younger than her sister. So we were like the three musketeers, right? So what one did, the other did and whatnot. Now I have to say that I was really thin, even though I thought I was fat, right? And in comparison to the other two were different heights and weight and whatnot. It's just something that we just did. I don't know. I Maybe it was just seeing our aunts do the darn thing, you know, drink wine at night, but not eat during the day and stuff. I don't know where we got it from. So you had some yeah. bad role models in your family. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, so your now corrections officer, 300 yeah. pounds. Yep, yep. Large okay. and in charge, girl. I was working it. <laughs> well, you know, I tell you, being a now, were you in a women's facility or a men's mm. facility? So um in the jail system, it's men, women, mentally ill, everybody. You know, if mm. you're unhealthy, you're there. They have a unit, you know, a healthcare unit, everything is there. So okay. I was on Fifth Avenue in downtown Seattle. So I oh. served, I worked primarily with the women the first 10, 12 years of my career. Mm -hmm. And um, that worked for me. That worked for me. And I think it worked for the county as well. And then I started merging into um, the clinic and working with medical and psych staff and stuff. So yeah, so it's co-ed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess I can see there being an advantage, you know, as a woman working in the corrections, yeah. you know, field to not be small. Yeah. Well, they had some petite five foot ladies that handled their oh, business. Did. And, you know, it's, it's like this, it's just how you interact with people, what your body yeah. language says, if you're respectful, you know, just the whole, right. Line. Your aura is what gets you through versus being a bully. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. So, so Lynn, I took a really big gamble in 2002. I thought I was just going to um, figure this weight thing out. In 2002, I decided to, because um, I was addicted to the scale too. So I decided to commit to not weighing myself for a year and a half. So in March of 2002, oh. threw the scale away and um, decided just to go the 18 months. So the first nine months, what I did was obsessively write everything down because, you know, we didn't have apps back then. Right. And I ate everything under the sun so long as it was 3000 calories or less. Okay. And in that, I always had a Snickers bar for the first nine months. I had a king size Snickers bar and I eventually graduated down to a regular size Snickers bar because okay. that was a comfort that was left over from childhood, believe it or not. Okay. I would eat mounds and mounds of candies, but Snickers was my ultimate favorite, the big mm -hmm. Snickers bar, right? And so I also decided to take up personal training just to learn for myself, nutrition, everything that I learned was wrong. It was wrong because I spent the next all the way through 2000 and I want to say 14, 15, it was a struggle. I didn't address any of my sugar addiction, which I didn't know I had. I didn't um, address any of the binging. I didn't in address anything. It was just masking. I kept binging like Saturday is my cheat day. It would go into two and three days. It, it was horrible, but I managed, right? So did you end up losing any weight? 110 pounds. Period? Okay. 110 so pounds. So restricting your dot, your calories to within 3000, just eating whatever you wanted, mm -hmm. including Snickers. Mm -hmm. 
You lost 110 pounds. Yes. And I exercised like a banshee. Yeah. I exercised like a banshee. And then on top of that, it was like I was eating Jolly Ranchers. Like our shift would start at like 6, 620 in the morning. So I would have Jolly Ranchers. I would just check off my little checklist, put it back in my uniform pocket. Like I would count out 10 Jolly Ranchers. I didn't know that I was feeding the insulin, you know, causing it to stay up and never yeah. go down. But I lost weight, but I was considerably younger too. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, that's definitely like a terrible, it sounds like a terrible diet. Yeah. Why do you think that worked for you? Is Were you just eating so many more calories prior to that? Or was it the yeah. exercise or was it just the belief that you could do it? I, what, what do you attribute um, I weight was loss to? eating a lot more calories, a lot more fast food. So even though I was eating fast food, I was just trying to keep it in that barometer instead of it being 10,000 calories a day. As um, Joy Bauer oh, had wow. pointed out, it was more 3,000. Taco Bell, obsessively writing it down so long as it hit that threshold. Okay. But then I would undo everything on the one day off. Okay. You know, to have a cheat day and stuff. So and other than your weight, how mm -hmm. was your health and other aspects when you were in that period of your life? I was a total, total. The first thing that came to mind is nut job. I was just cray to the Z. Okay. But, but, but. I was very high functioning. And like now, I know exactly what I want to do. Everything is lined out and I just do it. But back then, I was still raising my daughter, mortgage payments, just the whole nine. So it was like I was operating and functioning because I had to. Does that make sense? I didn't have any oh, other yeah. choice. You just right? pushed through. Yeah. yeah. So when you say you were crazy, what did that look like? So crazy for me was... I knew what my routines needed to be in order to get to work, function, pay bills, um, and have a relationship with my daughter, right? I knew what the parameters were, but there was a lot of mind drama, a lot of mind drama. Like I couldn't concentrate on a thought, like, should I go work out before I go to work? Should I run on the treadmill at home before I go? There's checklists that I had to get through for the day. And if I didn't run my five miles, if I didn't, you know, clean up or didn't do this, I stayed up till two in the morning and I had to get up at four. Okay. So I was just at my wits end, like I so said. So the obsession mm -hmm. was still- the compulsiveness, compulsive. Yeah, the compulsiveness yeah, and yeah. that obsession. Mm -hmm. You're, so mm -hmm. you shifted your obsession to this yeah. new way of life, but it was still there. Yeah. yeah. Now, physically, did you have any issues such as, you know, joint, joint pain? Did you have gut mm -hmm. issues? Any other particular health issues? The only one was constipation, but I still had relied truthfully on, you know, laxatives and whatnot to help me okay. through that. And um, that would be the only fallback. And even I used to run races, travel to races, run like 15, 20, 25 a year wow. and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. And travel and stuff like that. So by the time my body started breaking down, that's when I was emotionally and mentally breaking down in 2018. And how did this time. impact your, your marriage and your relationship with your daughter? So my relationship with my daughter, <laughs> we're like besties, right? Mm -hmm. We're like besties and stuff. When we communicate, the one compliment that I can always remember her saying when she was in college was, thank you for never bringing your drama into my life, oh. meaning that I didn't sh overshare with her because she was with college students that were, you know, depressed and had issues going on because of their family drama, because they were brought into their parents' dynamics and stuff. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So with that being said, me and my husband, we get along. We get along. We live in the same home and we've been married since I was 18 and a half. Right. Yeah. So we're still here. We're still hanging tight, but we're two totally separate um, entities. Yeah, mm. two totally separate entities, but it, we get on well. Yeah. Well, you've been married for, you know, so what, 37 yes. years? Yes, I think 38, Len. 38 
I think I got to do the math. Oh, but thirty-eight. Too young to be married for thirty-eight yeah. years. I know this yeah. year will be thirty-four years for me. Nice. So wow. Yeah. So you know, I mean, having that type of you know background and the mental health issues that come from it does take a toll on your relationships yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I mean, it, I don't know your husband, but it, the fact that he's still there is yeah. it definitely says something. But we all, we both had our own issues, if you understand mm. what I'm saying. And, yeah. you know, and God couldn't have brought me a better partner because it's yeah. kind of like you do you, I do me. And, yeah. you know, I'm responsible for myself. So and my there's this acceptance. And mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So what, and I'm going to show the your video, but I <laughs> want you to share how on earth did you get on the Today Show? How oh. did that happen? What, what led to that? So this is, okay, way back in the day, there was a more magazine, a women's magazine. Um, I don't know if you remember that, but. No, I don't remember it. But I'm really good at self-promotion and I'm not going <laughs> to say that I'm ashamed of that. So I used to send emails when we had to email and actually type up letters and send them. Okay. So they were asking for something to hear about personal stories. So I just wrote in and told them mine and um, they put me on the Today Show. So did they fly you out to New York City? So what happened was, is I ran the Moore Marathon. They had a half marathon and I was putting all this in the thing. I'm coming out to your half marathon. I know da, 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 da. Okay, and then that's it. how the first time, but the second okay. time, I think was like three or four years later, um, they flew me out there on their dime, the Today Show. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to yeah. show everybody. Okay. Yeah. I love this. Okay. So. I want to just preface this. This this is not all these w results are not from the carnivore diet. No, no. These are from that eat whatever you want, eat your Snickers bars, keep it under three thousand calories, and and exercise like a banshee. <laughs> so, are you showing them the first one the where first they one. showed the food with Hoda Kemp? Yes, Hoda. Uh huh. So that was from two thousand and eight. That one's from two thousand eight. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and start that. Let's see here. We're about to meet a woman uh, who her name is Rosie. She dropped 110 pounds. She was 300 pounds, yes. went to 193. She has an incredible story. Let's just take a look. Hi, I'm Rosie. Weight has always been an issue for me. My grandmother raised me until I was about five years old. She always gave me food and candy. The comfort and love that I felt regarding food came from her. My earliest memories of eating abnormally began then. I then went to live with my stepmother and father and traveled quite a bit because my father was in the army. It was a dysfunctional household. I believe I transferred my feelings about food with me each time I moved. Throughout the years, food brought me tremendous comfort. As a teenager, my weight fluctuated as I bounced between starving myself and binging. I got married at 18 and my husband and I had our daughter by the time I was 20. My weight soared to 300 pounds within two years. My husband gently suggested that I go to the gym. In the next few years, I made several attempts to lose weight, only to gain it back again. In 2002, when my daughter Ebony was 14 years old, I realized that I was living a lie. Everything I was telling her about living well and being healthy, I wasn't doing for myself. And then I decided to try to lose the weight once and for all. I made up my own guidelines and promised to be patient with myself. Self-acceptance and accepting responsibility for my health are at the top of my list each and every day. What an incredibly sweet woman. So let's take one more look at Rosie. Let's get that Rosie before comes. picture up there. All right, Rosie's about to come out the door. All right, Rosie, come join the Joy Fit Club. Oh, Look at me. I was, yeah, you do? Yeah. You got that? Yeah. But you know what I loved about her? It just didn't even know. Yeah. 
confidence all the way. All the way. She not, when she was heavy, it wasn't like you said, oh God, I'm heavy and you crouched down. No, you, you were head up. To get to that point to make the start, there was, right. that confidence was not there initially at all. Right. Right. What was your aha moment? When my you aha know? moment was realizing that my daughter was getting older and that I was basically lying to her about how to live a healthy life and to go for what she knew in life. You were so. preaching something you weren't living. Right. Yeah. And right. What's the best part about being lighter? Because I always hear people say, like, I don't have heart problems anymore. My knees don't hurt. What's the biggest change you felt? Confidence and yeah. looking great and wearing clothes that I want to wear each and every day. So were you heavy all the way when you were a little girl? Yeah. Yeah. When did you start putting on the weight? Um, at about 20 when I when I got pregnant uh -huh. and had my daughter, and it just compiled from there. But I understand your husband was very gentle about, maybe you should go to the gym, uh -huh. honey, after the baby. Nudge, right? nudge. nudge, yeah. nudge. And you didn't go to the gym? <laughs> I didn't go to the gym until he suggested it. Yeah. Joy, Joy yeah. what makes her unique? Like, what's different about, about Rosie's story, Joy? Aside from being so lovable. <laughs> you are so adorable. She is. She's very yeah. contagious. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I think one of the big um, points that I got from Rosie is that she started to lose the weight when she was honest with herself. Yeah. She was in denial for quite a while. And when she, um, you know, became aware of how overweight she was, she just made up her mind she was going to change behaviorally and with the food. And I want to show you some of the food she was eating before. Yes, come on. Let's go. Look, look at what you dined on. This is real. This is from okay. Rosie. She would start her morning with a half a box of Captain Crunch cereal with yeah. some milk. A whole yeah. half a box. A whole yeah. lot of eggs mm -hmm. with some sausage and four pieces of toast with jam. So that was breakfast. breakfast. I can't even breakfast. imagine the grocery bill you had. I know. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Lunch was four hot dogs dogs with Why relish not? and ketchup Unbelievable. and then for dinner she would have things like two oversized beef burgers mm -hmm. with um not the ketchup and patties, huh? no no yeah. the high fat beef with mayonnaise and ketchup and the mm -hmm. works a whole lot but of rice that many calories in an onion <laughs> <laughs> a lot of chips right. a lot of dessert the ho-hos and hostess but her big vice yeah, was every single day she would have two King size Snickers Come bars. down here, girl. Don't try to hide it. You ready for that? Come on. Come okay. on. Okay, At what the is end this? of one year, <laughs> she totaled 730 king size Snickers. That's 365,000 okay, calories. Can I ask you one question? Worth. If I were to eat this entire basket full, uh -huh. how many pounds would somebody put on by eating all that? In a year, it averaged out to about two pounds per week. That's so more that's... than a hundred pounds at the end of the year. So this was the hardest <laughs> yeah. thing to give up. And it, it was the hardest you... thing, but I did it gradually. And what about now when you see a Snickers? I, I don't do it... Snickers. You don't do Snickers. I don't do... Are you cold turkey on all this stuff, or do you every now pretty and much, then? Yeah. Pretty yeah. Much, yeah. Yeah. So what do you have for a snack now? The healthy snack now is a um, hundred calorie. <laughs> Um, pack of popcorn yeah. or some yogurt. Or do you like a Cliff Bar? Cliff right? Bar's a Cliff good. Bar mm -hmm. good for no more nutrition. You know what? Though? She lost the weight eating Snickers because she did know that she couldn't give it up immediately. So instead of the king size, she went to the fun size and she kept it in her <laughs> routine. What did you eat? Like what? What? How did you change your diet? Um, the first nine months, it was just basically behavioral. Yeah. And I scaled back on my normal food that I ate. And in the second nine months, I started keeping track of my calories and just eating regular food. And can I just say one other thing this woman did? This is unbelievable. More Magazine had a marathon and half marathon yesterday, uh -huh. and you ran it. What'd the you run? Marathon. And there's another, there's another woman right there. Girl, you got to feel so good. All right. Thank you, Rosie. Joy, thank you so, so much. And again, if you want to join the Joy Fit Club, go to todayshow.com. Girl. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Girl, oh, hang on. Like I just got to turn myself off here. Hold on. Okay, there we go. That seems like such a lifetime ago. <laughs> so, I mean, I had such a yeah. fun time watching that oh, when I watched you. it earlier, and I just had another fun time watching it again because there is thank still you. so much joy. And so I'm looking at this table of food, yeah. and it was really interesting because they seemed – they seemed like they pointed out, you know, it wasn't a low fat. It was a high fat burger. Like yeah. that was a good thing. <laughs> or like, like, a, like a high fat was a bad thing. Right. right. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at all that and going, yeah, the high fat burger was probably the only good thing on that table. Yes. Yes. So, but when I watch that, it's like, okay, that looks like a success story. Yeah. And it was presented and they said some fantastic good points about how you mm. You took control. You were honest mm -hmm. with yourself. You know, it was a good clip that they did. And mm -hmm. it was a celebration of some really great positive 
things, changes that you made in your life. So why, why did you need to change your diet and end up going into the carnivore diet? So we can fast forward to 2018. I was just tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired, man. I had hit rock bottom. I think a lot of times as humans, we do hit rock bottom and we find a way to pick ourselves back up. But I was close to 50 or 50 in 2018 and I didn't have something to pick me back up. I didn't have my daughter the, her mm -hmm. care, her medical benefits, you know, that kind of thing weighing on me. The mortgage, if it got paid, it got paid. That's where I was thinking, right? And um, my mental health, I wasn't sleeping. Um, I was just functioning, if if that makes sense. I was just functioning, barely above the fray. I and are you what still working in corrections at mm -hmm, this point? Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is the craziest thing. Um at that time, because I didn't know which way to turn. And then for like a year prior to that, I had been having difficulties with running longer distances, which gave me relief. And there was socialization in that. And there was clout also in the running world. Girl, you did that. You know, that yeah, kind of stuff, absolutely. right? Kudos and stuff, accolades. So because I was having physical injuries, knee problems, inflammation, and some back issues, but I kept pushing through because that's the warrior in me, right? Right. I finally couldn't run the way I used to run. And that's okay. that's probably why it all came to a head also, because I didn't have that relief, that output, that socialization. So you were starting to experience some musculoskeletal yes. issues. Yes. And then the mental health was still not good. Yes, it wasn't good. And it was actually getting worse because I didn't have that high level output. And so God clearly told me, um, Landon, it still brings chills and tears to my eyes. In the clearest voice ever, he said, if I tried to get to retirement, I would not be restored, fully restored to my health if I pushed through, because I had seven more years to get to retirement. Okay. And um, I knew that I needed to leave the career that I was in. I wow. knew at this point I needed to take care of myself, regardless if the mortgage was paid, regardless of whatever. Mm. And with that, when God speaks, I listen, right? That's good. Wise woman. And then also at the same time, my daughter was selling um, ketones, exogenous ketones. Okay. So I simultaneous, simultaneously thought, oh, this could be my last chance, my last ditch effort. I could buy these ketones. I'm going to support her, right? I'm going to support her business, but I'm also going to lose all this weight and not have to change anything that I'm eating. Mm. I spent thousands of dollars trying to figure that part of it out, just like Shakeology, just like Weight Watchers and all these other diets that I was on. I started learning about intermittent fasting and the ketogenic diet. Now, Lynn, it took me six months to make the effort outside of the exogenous ketones. I was getting smart by then. <laughs> and on December 2nd, 2018, I took a leap and I said, I'm going to do the ketogenic diet because I had okay. enough information and intermittent fasting simultaneously. And when you were just doing the exogenous ketones, were you seeing benefits from that? Girl, no, because I was eating okay. garbage, garbage, garbage. I was still eating the standard diet. So it was diet. totally going to be a pill that yes. was counteract. Yes. yes. Kind of like was... I used to tell myself that a Diet Coke would would counteract the cake. <laughs> would cancel each other out. Right. right. You know? Yeah. So that was exactly Never my thought did. process. Never did. figure. And, you know, this is the funniest thing. You, I, and the next person, we are the brightest, most intelligent people in most rooms that we go into, right? I mean, just think of it like that. We know what's going on. But when it comes to our weight, when it comes to our health, we struggle with it, right? And I didn't know why it was so hard for me to get this one thing right permanently yeah. when I got and, everything else right. And that's where I have always taken issue with people who make the claim that those mm -hmm. who struggle with their weight are just lazy yeah. and yeah. they're undisciplined yeah. because 
that is absolutely not true because like what you just said, you know, you had control over, you mean, you're successful in your career. You're a very intelligent woman. You know, I was as well, you know, I had two bachelor's degrees. I had a first career as a corporate accountant, a second career as a nurse and my bachelor's in nursing, you know, raised special needs kids that we adopted. You know, it's like the function was everywhere except for with my own right. health and my right. own and the weight and the, my, food addiction. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. totally understand what you're saying. And I think mm -hmm. that I, I, if the world would start to understand that it's not a lack of willpower. Mm -mm. We have more willpower than most people. And we know more nutritional stuff than most people because we've been working so hard at it for so long. Right. And we have been testing out everything that they everything. tell us is going to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Move more, eat less, yada, yada, yada. Yep. Yeah. Got you. So yeah. when I started on that, I did everything wrong. When I say wrong, I mean, completely wrong. Um, I was still trying to um, make foods lend that resembled the standard American diet that I loved. And I kept falling off the wagon, so to speak. Yeah. Right. I didn't understand about my food addiction at that point. I didn't understand about sugar and carb addiction at that point. But here's what I did. I started taking a lot of certifications, a lot of courses, because I needed to learn what really is intermittent fasting? What is the ketogenic diet? So I did that. Um, December through December. And then it was in 2020, January, 2020, that I decided to give carnivore a try. And now Lynn, Lynn carnivore was smooth sailing. I had no That's problems, sad. no problems, but this is the deal. I think it was Easter. I decided to take off, you know, the holidays, a special day. Oh, I'm going to make an exception. But that exception led into a three, four day binge before I came back to carnivore. So I repeated that cycle for about six times. And I also got certified through Bitten Janssen, um, you know, with sugar, um, the sugar uh, tool where um, it's an in-depth interview. So, I mean, it looks at your whole history. When did you start eating in this capacity? Okay. You know, Bitten Janssen. I, I don't, but I have, oh. I was introduced through your video. Yeah. Okay. With you, your, your video where you shared your, your history. Yeah. So, so with, ben, is it Benton? Bitten, B-I-T-T-E-N. Okay. So I'm going to write this down. So B-I-T-T-E-N. J-O-N. S S O N S S O N B I T T E N J O N S S O N. Mm -hmm. And then the, 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 the serve or the. So she has two, she has two certifications. So one was the sugar, the okay. sugar tool. It's an assessment. Okay. It's an in-depth interview. It takes about two hours and you plug all this stuff in. Once you um, get the answer, you plug it in. It's not like it's, um, biased or anything, right? So you just answer the questions that okay. the interviewer is asking you or the coach is asking you and it's all plugged in. Now I had to take that assessment before I could, you know, enroll because I needed to see where I was at and because it was a part right. of her curriculum. Now, even though I took that, I was still in denial. I was still in denial. I hit everything Every every marker on there, I hit it and hit it, and I was still in denial. So but is that I, the assessment that showed that your addiction started when you were yes, three at yes. the latest? Mm -hmm. At the and earliest, you, yeah. And you were still not convinced that there was a problem. You know what? I was in denial because I'm a strong black woman. I can do anything. And if I want to eat some sugar, I didn't understand about moderation and abstinence. But I can tell you one thing, August 20th, 2020, I finally got it. The reason I finally got it, me and my girlfriend took a trip to the ocean, like Long Beach, somewhere over there. Mm -hmm. And she's been a lifelong girlfriend. And I said, oh, we can do Mexican because she was trying to be sensitive and helpful with me about my diet. I said, oh, if we go to a Mexican restaurant, which she loves, I said, I'll just eat the meat and the cheese and the sour cream. Girl, that went out the window. As soon as we got in the restaurant, I ate everything under the sun. And she wow. had the next day with one of her friends. So I had a whole day to myself. I was binging the whole time on the way back. 
I was binging. It took me forever. And then a day or two later, I had a scheduled photo shoot. It was, it was, it was terrible for about three days. And my birthday, mm-hmm. September the 1st, was when I wanted to go off the diet, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I, I finally got it that I was an addict. I was addicted yeah. to sugar processed food. I finally got it. And then Do you I think spent- it's because of how bad you felt? Say it one more time. I didn't. Do you, think, do you think that you finally got it? Like, because it was because of how bad you felt afterwards or what, what do you think flipped mm-hmm. that light switch on? Because I was completely fine the first three, three and a half months of 2020 when I committed to just eating meat. But the second that I went off the Richter scale with these other foods, I saw the pattern. It took six times for me to finally get it, that I was okay the first couple of months of the year. Yeah. So, so I finally got it and I finally accepted it that there's some things that I can never have again. And I'm okay with that because I've had enough of that. Right. Well, that's good. Let me just yeah. read this comment from Arlene. Sure. She says, when I was a vegan and eating fruit in 2019, it got my sugar too high and I had painful, painful neuropathy in my feet. And I was scared because my grandfather had terrible diabetes and had both his legs amputated. Wow. I know Arlene has been, he comments on my channel a lot. So yeah, you know, and sometimes, sometimes when you see somebody go through that, it makes a big impression and it can kind of wake you up and it's amazing. Other times it doesn't, Right. you know, so each person has their own thing Mm -hmm. that suddenly wakes you up. Like for you, it was a binge, binge on, you know, that started with Mexican food. Um, do you, do you remember when you were in that Mexican restaurant? Mm -hmm. Was it, and you decided to just throw out your plan to only eat meat. Was it, did you, was it kind of like, did did you have to argue with yourself in your mind or was it like mindlessly boom? It's almost like the whole plan. No, no, I argued with myself. I was like, okay, they set the tortillas down. What are those uh, chip things? And the the salsa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll just have this. Oh, we'll do. But when that menu hit, I already knew what I wanted to eat. Because mm-hmm. it, it's kind of like, okay, I can just order meat, cheese, and sour cream realistically right. is what I wanted. But as soon as the chips and salsa hit and I was trying to be like, oh, you can just have 10 chips. You can just have some salsa. It was over with. It was a wrap. So you just started to justify yeah, it having the chips and salsa. And it was mm-hmm. like, that was it. It was it was out the window. Yeah. And, you know, I felt bad. I used to go to bed back in the day because of my trauma, I would actually eat platefuls of food in bed and fall Mm -hmm. asleep and still be eating, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. right? So even after eating all that food, we went to the hotel, I laid down, no problem. She went to go visit her friend. I was out looking for my drugs. I was out looking for chocolate, looking for candy and just eat, 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 eat. Yeah, yeah. Did you sneak out? Oh, no, no, no. The next morning. No, I I never um, do things of that caliber anymore. Although I can tell you um, in 2018, when I had made the decision to leave service, I didn't leave until April of 2019. We paid off our house in October of 2018 because I didn't want to have to deal with a mortgage. So we committed yeah. to that. And then um, I was so worried that even though I was ketogenic and intermittent fasting in December, Lynn, I would drive by a Safeway that was on my way home, go in and get two pieces of cake, go in and get um, the chicken strips. Was it that that. birthday cake? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that was one of my advice as well. Yeah. Individual servings, right? Yeah. But But still. Large. Yeah. But I mean, I would eat them eat them and then um, throw the stuff away before I got home. But that was my way of kind of coping and trying to figure life out, right? So I committed to staying carnivore for the rest of 2020 from Mm -hmm. August forward. And it was with success. And then in January 2021, (laughs) something just told me, well, let's just try to reintroduce some foods like avocados, blueberries, cashews. So I before lost. that, how was your mental health Do, when you were just doing carnivore and you're sleeping? It was sleep- good. It was okay. good. Now, about I've, that joint pain that you were having? 
the inflammation was going yeah. down and I was losing okay. weight, but this is the thing. I wasn't doing long distances anymore. So that okay. helped also. I was um, walking long distances, but I wasn't running, if that okay. makes sense. So that helped a lot. And I still got that mental relief and the activity. Something told me just because of the people that I was listening to in the news and on YouTube, you can do keto. You can, you know, girl, I started introducing food um, again, like the avocados, the cashews, and just things that were supposed to be keto safe. I I lost everything. I lost my sobriety on that as far as um, <laughs> the blueberries. I can't touch a blueberry because if there's five blueberries in my hand, I eat the whole pint. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? If yeah. this is with single serve cashews, oh, let me just go ahead and get a six ounce canister. I will eat all of them and then I'll still eat my steak too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so in the June- is easy. It sounds like it's very easy. It doesn't take a whole lot no, to no, fall back into it. No. So by June, I was like, I'm done. So since June of 2021, it's been a wrap. I've been hardcore carnivore girl for life. Yeah. Yes. So you learned yeah. that yeah. this is it. Mm -hmm. I have to stay carnivore yeah. and otherwise it all just goes, all your efforts have yeah. been reversed. So we have a question here. Sure. Um, Okay, so Ingrid and Carlos. So, so hi, ladies. Thanks for this live. You're welcome. Glad you're here. Do any of you do two meals a day or OMAD? Any fasting? If so, what benefits have you seen with weight loss? So I'll let you field that question okay. first. She looks like she's asking both of us, but I'll let yeah. you go ahead and field that one first. So this is the deal. When I started um, the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting in December 2018, I try to do the two or three meals a day within a 12 hour window, but I really quickly found out that that wasn't going to work for me because I'm a volume eater. So within a couple of weeks, I committed to OMAD and that has worked splendidly for me since. So I only eat one meal a day. I like um, just being able to cook my burgers or whatever I'm cooking, eat Till, till I'm satiated, wash the dishes yeah. and I'm done. But um, two or three meals would never work for me. So do you do, so obviously you do the intermittent fasting because that's just yes. inherent in yes. doing OMAD. Do you ever yeah. do any longer fasts? Okay. I did one fast that was 36 hours and it was the worst <laughs> fast of my life because it wasn't because it was painful. I couldn't do it, but I was obsessing about food. I'm a person who oh, really needs to eat every day. So I don't, I'm, a, I eat one meal a day, 22 hours or longer. So somewhere between 22 hours and 28 hours. And my window is generally about three o'clock during the week and one o'clock during the summer hours when I'm not working. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I mean, but that's good. You did that and you learned something about yourself. And I really truly believe that we all need to figure out what works for us individually. You know, there's, I don't think there's really a playbook. We have to figure it out and we have to, you know, because I, so for myself, I'm kind of the opposite of you. I'm actually a very light eater. I have mm. trouble eating a large volume of food at one time. Mm. And, but I also don't get hungry. And so for me, I have periods of time where I'm OMAD. I have found that when I do that, I still am not eating enough. And so okay. I have been trying to eat two meals a day. Okay. Sometimes it ends up being one meal and a snack. And my, my latest thing, I dropped a lot of weight in February and like uh, probably too much yeah. for one month. And I ended, I've been losing my hair oh. and I think, and so I've been trying to eat more. And so if I'm, you know, I'm in this phase, you've been doing this longer than I have. I've only been doing it not even a year yet. You know, May of last year was when I started. So I'm still working out and figuring out what works for me. And I've found mm -hmm. that it has changed. Yes. And I think that it's really important to be always self-reflecting and evaluating where are you at, you know, yeah. as far as what you need to eat for you mm -hmm. and where your health is currently at. And I think it does change. Yeah. 
So I, I, I don't ever listen to anybody that says, oh yeah, OMAD works great for me and think that it's going to necessarily be the thing that I need mm -hmm. to do. Yeah, it could be detrimental to you depending on what your specific needs are, right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. honestly for you, it triggered mm -hmm. a mental health yes. issue. It sounded like physiologically yeah. it might have been fine, Yeah. but if yeah. you find that you're trying to do a lengthy fast or whatever mm -hmm. and you're obsessing about food and mm -hmm. your food addiction is your issue, that is not good. <laughs> Right. And then there's no need for me to fast longer than my normal 22 or 24 hours every day. If there was an actual health need, then I would adjust and adapt. Right. But there's no right. need for me to go longer than that. So I don't. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's really, a, we all run our, we're supporting each other on our own individual journeys. Um, so Arlene says that in 2020, I began low carb to get off my diabetic medication and to never have uh, that painful neuropathy in my feet mm -hmm. from too much fruit sugar and good until begin keto desserts in 2023. Oh yeah. Those keto desserts. I get it. I did the same thing you did with the keto. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to recreate the foods that I was addicted to on the standard American diet. And you know, you can do that with keto very easily because when you really get into keto, they're pushing, you know, all of these fun little cakes, mm -hmm. the, you know, the cup cake cups, whatever yeah. you put in the microwave, really, you know, and all these different things in the yeah. fat bombs and, mm -hmm. you know, you add all these extra, you know, artificial sweeteners or stevia or whatever to yeah. them. Yeah. It did not cure the addiction. Yeah. It probably you know? fueled it to be quite honest. Yes. And it's yeah. not, it was not sustainable. Yeah. I did keto for three, for two years. Okay. I even, I lost like 50 pounds in the first year and then mm -hmm. I plateaued and I still stuck with it for another year before I realized this isn't, we're doing anything. This isn't working. Mm -hmm. So, um, Arlene had a question. Oh, for me and I'll let you answer this too. So what do okay. you eat? How much a day? Um, so again, I mentioned, I, I struggle with getting enough. Mm -hmm. Um, so I kind of go back and forth. Like I'm on the lion diet because I have an immune system disease and I found that, that, you know, I have to keep things low histamine and I have to be really careful with what I eat. And so mm -hmm. I, I do sometimes eat some seafood, but most of the time I eat either like a steak like I'll have a ribeye steak, but maybe it's like 10 ounces. I should probably have a bigger one, but maybe a 10 ounce ribeye steak um, for dinner. I tend to also have, um, and we got our beef and we have lamb. I eat lamb a lot. We got it from a local rancher. Um, and so I'll take ground beef and ground lamb and kind of combine it with just salt, like sea salt. Okay. And then um, I'll make big, huge, like face size patties in my air fryer and I'll make, <laughs> I'll eat that. Um, I do. I have recently found that I can handle with my mass cell activation syndrome. I can handle some coffee with some heavy cream. And, um, I've actually been yeah. able to tolerate some like chocolate flavor element. So I've been putting that whizzing that up in my magic bullet in the morning. Um, and I wasn't getting enough fat. So I think the heavy mm -hmm. cream helps. I do eat some chomps beef sticks. Um, and, uh, I've got a brisket that I'm working on right now but i've been i found initially it was like i'm going to eat to hunger but mm -hmm. i'm finding that i i need to eat more than that because of the hair, hair loss and yeah. everything so, yeah. yeah so i i mean my diet is not exciting at all <laughs> it's not i mean i usually throw something frozen in the sous vide and mm -hmm. when i'm ready to eat it it goes in the air fryer okay <laughs> what about okay. you what does your daily diet look like so it used to be really, really dramatic, like all the steaks, um, all the burgers, all the ground beef. But man, let me just tell you, I'm a burger girl. I'm Kelly Hogan in the making. Yeah. If you give me four hamburger patties, and I'm on a cheese kick right now, four hamburger patties with one slice of cheese on one of them, and then maybe six to eight or 10 eggs, depending on how I'm feeling, with a slice of cheese, I am golden. So nice. I can eat four hamburger patties, a couple of slices of cheese, and anywhere between six and 10 eggs. I'm done. It's a wrap. So that's, and that's one meal. Yeah, one meal. Yeah. One yeah. meal. Well, and then if I'm feeling really fancy, really fancy, I'll drop one of the patties and have some pork rinds. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. 
No, yeah. I mean, my, my husband used to pork rinds all the time. Every, yeah. every once in a while, I mean, as I've been on, on the lion diet for as long as I have been, I think my histamine levels are much lower. I can tolerate a couple things here and there. Pork rinds are higher in histamine. Um, so I, I've found that I can have some, you know, yeah. every once in a while. So every once in a while, I'll have a few pork rinds or something. But um, so, so going then, finally coming to the realization that you need to just be carnivore. Yeah. Yeah. How has your, how has your, that changed your life since then? How is your health? How is your fitness? Everything is on point. And usually the saying or the thought that I had is as I get older, I might be slowing down, but I'm not, I'm still grinding it out and I'm doing it happily. Right. Oh, and I just have to say about food, I'm trying to renew my relationship with chicken. <laughs> I'm trying to learn how to cook it and okay. enjoy it. Right. But, um, everything is just simplified. It's streamlined. I don't have any more mental chatter. Um, mm. I've never really had self-doubt publicly. You know, it's kind of like I would just fake it till I made it. But inside that voice was saying, girl, don't do that. No, da, da, you know, all this conversation going on, the self-doubt, unsureness. Now I'm just like, it's just straight. I'm even killed. I have Zen. I don't give energy to where it's not needed. Yeah. So, so and was a that a conscientious decision that you made to be, to approach life that way? I think it just sort of happened. Okay. Sort of happened. And the reason I say it sort of happened is because I just no longer have the energy. I no longer have the energy to um, care about things that I once cared about. The drama, you know, yeah. the soap operas. Yeah. Do you feel that it was maybe just an anxious thing in your life that it was, yeah, yeah you're, it wasn't not, it wasn't good mental health. It was just, right. yeah. So now you're yeah. in a much better place. And it was a part of the depression to the looping, the cycling and stuff. It was a part of the depression too. And um, maybe like looking at a neighbor, I'm not really neighborly. I know who the neighbors are, but it's not like I go sit down and have tea with them, but I'm more selective of who I choose to interact with. Right. Yeah. And years and years ago, I needed everybody to be my friend. I needed to be everybody's friend. I needed to be in everybody's business. My lane is the only lane I need to be in. And that's a part of the carnivore zen too. You know, I'm thinking about my right. meal at three o'clock, girl. I don't know what you're right. doing, but I'm thinking about my food. There's a peacefulness. Yes. I found that like a just, you know, you're, you don't worry about things that you worried about mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And I think that also kind of comes with age too, but mm -hmm. the diet definitely helps to bring that the the kind of calm things down the calmness and you don't have the um insulin spikes right the highs and lows it's just a steady constant stream yeah. of energy yeah. and now i i you have mentioned to me before a little bit mm -hmm. about your current workout schedule <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you're, so fitness is still a big part of your life. Yes. yes. And I know that there's times you've been like, oh, it's 4am time to go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, so which, how, how do you view your, your workout routine now? Because it was a obsession before. Do you feel you've broken free from it being an obsession in your life? And now it's, you're approaching it differently. So I wouldn't say that I'm approaching it differently just because it's a stabilizing force in my life, right? Okay. So like some people have their mothers that they rely on or, you know, whatever is their foundation. So exercise and coffee is my foundation along with diet for my mental wellness, along with okay. physical wellness. But there was a phase um, maybe for about a year where I couldn't work out as hard as I'd like to. So I don't want people to think that they have to exercise in order to lose weight because I still made progress. Right. I still made progress. And um, it's just something that I love to do. So now I'm on a cycle because I'm training for <laughs> Tough Mudder in um, August. In August. But this is the thing. It's going to be full disclosure. 
I'm training for it, but I need something like a carrot, right? I'm looking at that. That's why I'm working so hard. And then I'm doing a boot camp in October in San Diego. So I have two events. Okay. You want to explain what Tough Mudder is for those people who don't know? Tough Mudder, you can do, I think they have like a three to five mile obstacle course. And then they also have one that's a 10 mile. And then they have some other ones that are endurance 12 hours or longer. But all they are obstacle courses. Like you got to, you know, climb a rope, get over a wall, go through like crawling in mud under barbed wire. But now this is between me and you and the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the obstacles are. The only thing that matters is that this black girl shows up at the start line, looks super cute, gets her (laughs) photos and does one obstacle. Okay. Okay. So if there's 10 on my course... I'm going to walk around the ones. I'm not trying to break my neck. I'm trying you to be have cute. Realist. Okay. So you're going <laughs> to. Right. I'm trying to be cute. You're going to show long- up and you're going to make a, make an appearance and make an impression and look good. Yes. And, yes. Okay. and so long as I do one, those are my rules, right? I don't care what Tough Mudder says. I paid the entrance fee and I'm walking around all those obstacles. <laughs> I would, that's what I would do. <laughs> Like seriously, oh, yeah, that makes yeah. me tempted to join it because it's like yes. I can do that. <laughs> right, right. Where I just it? wanna um it's gonna be in Black Diamond. So that's like in the Auburn area. Oh yeah. It's yeah, gonna that's be in, in the Washington. Auburn. It's in Washington. Yeah. So that yeah, yeah, that's actually within a driving distance for me. Yeah. I don't know. That's a little bit tempting. I never thought that I would ever even think about doing something like that yes. but if it's like okay do one obstacle and then walk around the rest i could probably do that shoot, shoot. i will tell everybody and their mother i'm not doing that because i used i did a couple of mud runs in the past and i was like mm-mm, mm-mm. but ma'am but ma'am my my assets i'm walking <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so exactly yeah, I'm looking forward so, to it yeah mm-hmm. that sounds awesome so um Okay. So you're doing great. So I would have one last question. Yes. I'm going to show your channel again. So you're in your channel is, you know, coach Rose AJ carnivore girl for life. Where does the coach come from? So the coach comes from, um, okay. So like, you know, beach body way back in the day, I wanted to be a beach body coach, but I couldn't get my body to look like it belonged at the beach, but you just sign up for it and you're a coach. Right. So my obsession with coaching came from that. Right. And so I am sort of a certified coach in a lot of different capacities, but the one that I carry at the forefront is the primal health Institute, Mm -hmm. because that is most in alignment with okay. the way I choose to live and serve. So I'm actually certified as a coach and I do have Excellent. my recent one from um, HCI. It's a dual certification that I got in January. And then the Carnivore Girl for Life is obvious. Carnivore Girl for Life. So if somebody <laughs> wants to reach out to you for mm-hmm. coaching, mm-hmm. what should they do? They can always email me. It's on there on, on my, um, bio or wherever on um, YouTube. And um, most of the time, Lynn, it's just a gentle conversation that people need to have, right? Okay. It's just a gentle conversation. So it's Coach Rose AJ, or um, okay. you can go there to my website. Go. Got it right here. Yeah. And then the Your website email. is the same too. Coach Rose AJ. Coach Rose AJ. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So this is, this is Rose's um, YouTube channel. Make sure that you check her out, subscribe, give her your love and support. Yes, please. Yep. And um, Rose is now actually also working with me on healing humanity. Woo-hoo-hoo. So if, if any of you have been hiding under a rock and don't know, Carrie, Carrie from Homestead How it is documentary, Healing Humanity, Rose and I are both working on that documentary. So we, we get to work together, which I'm excited about. And, um, but we also, and I'm going to be, we're going to be both of us on our separate channels sharing more information. But if you are anywhere in the vicinity of Washington and want to come and join us for a meetup, we are planning a meetup in on May 11th. And, um, we're kind of working out the details, but it is going to be a walk around Green Lake, which is in Northern Seattle. 
and then followed by just a really casual, you know, coffee. We, we, we were talking about this ahead of time. We decided we're not going to go out for a meal because not everybody can afford it. And, and a lot of times the restaurants for, for me in particular have inflammatory food. So bring your, bring your beef sticks and bring your, whatever you snack on and your, you know, your cheese or whatever, but plan on coming and, you know, hanging out have some coffee or, you know, or tea or whatever, water. We're yeah. just going to be a, a social time, a time to get to know each other. And, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll provide more information as the day approaches. So great. Arlene's up to your channel. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank Our you. Our day. Well, hello. Yeah. Hola. Hi, Adam. Good to see yeah. you. So we love Adam. Adam's one of our fearless leaders yes. on healing humanity. So um, anyways, well, good. Well, listen, I know we've got, I've kept you, I've kept you a while. Mm. It's fine. I love this. I love it. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun. I've been so, you know, I've really, really just love your, your story. And I love your spirit. And I Thank love you. the fact that you put so many years of your life into yeah. doing everything you thought was correct yeah. to try yeah. to improve your health. Yeah. Ended up on the Today Show yeah. as an example of yeah. how to improve your health. But then it wasn't enough. You so. Know? There's one thing, I didn't mean to cut you off, Lynn, but no there's one thing that I want to interject here, um, why this is so important for me. You know, I can always say that um, I want to show up to be a role model, to be an example of what is possible, right? But there's been other women in history that have done it, starting with Joan of Arc, right? And Cleopatra mm -hmm. that have done it before us that we can fall back and look on. But what I didn't share, and I it was an oversight on my part, when I left service, I was trying to figure out how I was going to make it financially right for myself, because that wasn't a part of our agreement being married. Um, you just quit because, but I needed to quit and work on myself and my mental health to the extreme that I made the decision to cash in my retirement. I cashed in my financial future in order to save my health and my mental wellness today. Wow. And I don't want another woman that is going through or that's addicted to sugar that just can't get off the merry-go-round, you know, I don't want another person to have to endure that. So that's my testimony. Yes, I did yeah. cash in my retirement, my future finances for today, but it was well worth it. Well worth it. Right. So you do yeah. what you have to do in order to do what you must do to live the quality of life that you need to live. Yeah. And that must have been, I mean, was that scary at all when you did that? Or did you just have a lot of confidence that that was the right thing to do? Well, it, it was the right thing to do because there's a certain level of living that I like to do. And we're not guaranteed tomorrow, right? Yeah. But if I don't invest in myself today and take the time out that I need, I can't and I won't have a future. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And you got that future. very clear message from God, yeah. like you said. Yeah. That yeah. it sounds to me like that was like, you're not going to yeah. be alive in seven years yeah. if you don't change yeah. something. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. But Amazing. anyway, so that's the one part that I forgot to share. So thank yes. you. Yes. And yeah. so, yeah. And I know those of you watching this on the replay, I still I really encourage you to go check out Rose. Your yeah. videos are so encouraging. They always put a smile on my face, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and if you need, if you need coaching, you need encouraging, mm -hmm. reach out to Rose yeah. and, you know, I, I can attest that she is a bright light and I really do want you to have a presence in the carnivore community that is continually growing as people get to know you. And I, I do believe that that's going to happen because, you know, I think you, you draw people to you. Yep. Thank you. So. I'm here to stay. I'm here to stay. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. And I just really looking forward to meeting yeah. you in person. Thank you. So, okay. Well, thank okay. you guys for being here. Really appreciate you hanging in here with us and uh, I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and sign off. I hope okay. everyone's having a wonderful evening and we're going to,